Hi, fourth graders. It's Mrs. Valgarino coming at you live from my house. Um, you're probably wondering why I look a little different today, why I have a helmet on, firefighter's helmet, um, and I'm going to tell you why. Uh, so this week we are reading a story called Smoke Jumpers, and smoke jumpers are really special and unique type of firefighter. So as some of you know, I've talked about it a little bit, um, my husband, Joe, he is a firefighter. Um, and he's a firefighter volunteer one in Hayfield. So I asked him if I could use his helmet. He said yes, um, in order to read this story to you today. Um, as you're listening to me read, you might find a lot of similarities and some differences between smoke jumpers um, and our kind of regular firefighters that we are used to seeing um, where we live. Uh, so here's Joe's helmet. So it has um, firefighter on it, it says Hayfield, and then it has his number. And then he has a red helmet actually, because he's a captain. Um, but otherwise they are black. And then the fire chief has a white one. So um, that's why his helmet's a little bit different. So um, if we look today, our genre or the type of story that we are reading is, it's an expository text. Um, so this is another way of saying nonfiction. We usually call it in our classroom nonfiction story. So it gives us information about real people, um, real events. So this is a nonfiction story about real people and real jobs. All right. So we're going to start on page 180. Um, and I also like in this story, they have a lot of really good photographs. So we've talked about with text features, photographs would be real pictures of different smoke jumpers and the fires that they fight. So if we take a look here, our first heading, it says extreme risk. And we'll start right there. Fighting forest wildfires is a dangerous business. Some wildfires, however, are easier to get to than others. They can begin to burn near roads or they can move through low-lying forests on a flat ground or gentle slopes. These wildfires are fought bravely by ground crews of hotshots. Hotshots can be a line of 5, 18, or 70 men and women who are working very close to a blazing wall of fire. Other wildfires burn in far-off remote areas of a forest. These wildfires can start in the deep gulch or high on a mountainside. These places are often far from roads. The only way to get to these blazes quickly is by dropping firefighters from planes. So what do you get when you cross a wildfire, wildfire firefighter with a parachutist? That's right, a smoke jumper. Smoke jumpers and hotshots are equally dedicated to putting out wildfires. Their mission is the same. Stop wildfires before their destructive energy destroys the forest, kills the animal, or threatens human life. Smoke jumpers have an added task, however. Before they even hit the ground, smoke jumpers are hard at work tracking the fire, finding the right place to jump, and concentrating on landing safely. Once the ground... Once on the ground, smoke jumpers work the same way any forest firefighter does. They cut down trees and drag them from the fire's path. They dig up stumps. They chop away the underbrush. Then they turn the soil over and over until just dirt remains. All of this work is done when the, while the fire creeps closer to them. So you can see in yellow that are highlighted, that highlighted text right there, we have two of our vocabulary words, concentrating and underbrush. So think about what those two words would mean in the text. It says that um, finding the right place to jump and concentrating on landing safely. And it says that they chop away at the underbrush. Here we have two pictures. Um, based on this picture, I'm going to guess that this is probably a smoke jumper because they said that they parachute into these fires. And then we also have a picture right here, a photograph that comes with a caption. So our caption says, when a wildfire occurs in a remote area, parachuting firefighters called smoke jumpers are called to battle the blaze. So that shows us what a fire might look like that the smoke jumpers would jump into. All right. The firefighters create a fire break, a wide dirt barrier, which is essential in helping to stop the spread of a wildfire. Sometimes, though, even 50 feet of dirt is not enough to keep sparks from drifting over to another dry forest area. Little sparks can create raging fires. Smoke jumpers can work for days against a large wildfire. They might work 18 hours with only breaks for food. Their dedication has stopped the destruction of millions of acres of forests all over the world. That was one thing we talked about, some of the current events we talked about 
um, this year at school was all of those different wildfires around the world that were happening. So I bet there's a lot of smoke jumpers at work. Um, our next heading is jumping into fire. Every summer seems drier than the last in the Rocky Mountains. Underbrush is like a tinderbox. A careless hiker or a flash of lightning could cause the area to quickly go up in flames. And then it happens. Lightning hits in the high gulch. Smoke is spotted from miles off. There are no roads nearby. And before long, the wildfire may get out of control. This is a job for smoke jumpers. Danger lurks all around the smoke jumpers. The airplane fights high winds caused by the rush of air from the blaze below. The plane must get the smoke jumpers to the drop zone. There is no large clearing. Rocks line the mountainside. The area is remote. If the fire rages out of control, rescuing the smoke jumpers will be difficult and dangerous. What is the plan? Situations like this are almost a daily routine for smoke jumpers. However, they trust that their training will help them overcome the obstacles that make fighting, make fighting wildfires so difficult. Special uniforms, equipment, and tools also help smoke jumpers fight wildfires as well as provide them with the protection while they battle those blazes. Most of all, smoke jumpers work together and help one another to make it through a long day or days of wildfire fighting. So I'm going to draw the conclusion that being a smoke jumper, it sounds like a really dangerous job. And like they said, I'm sure they have a lot of special equipment that they need um, in order to keep them safe every day. Right. Oh, here we are talking about that special gear. Um, so the next heading here in red, it says jumpsuit and safety gear. So that heading tells me that that is what we're going to be reading about and learning about here. Um, so if we take a look before we start reading on the right side of this page, we have a text feature. Think about it in your head, what text feature that is. We just learned about those. So this would be a diagram. And these uh, little boxes with the arrows and the lines, we would call those labels. So they are labeling the different parts of the diagram. And it's labeling the different parts of their safety gear and their equipment. So let's go ahead and read and we'll go back to that diagram. You don't go to the beach without your swimsuit, do you? Of course not. Well, smoke jumpers don't jump from an airplane into a firestorm without the right clothing either. Smoke jumpers wear lightweight jumpsuits made of fire retardant material. The jumpsuits help keep them cool during the long workday digging a fire break. Jumpsuits are either bright orangey white or yellow. These colors can be easily seen from the air and through the trees. If a smoke jumper gets separated from his or her crew or stick or stick during a jump or while fighting a blaze, a plane has a better chance of spotting the bright colored suit. Jumpsuits are padded to break the fall of a parachute jump. This is important in the rocky areas of a drop zone. Each jumpsuit has several large pockets for carrying small tools and the all-important safety line ladder. Smoke jumpers also wear gloves while fighting wildfires. Gloves, however, are not worn during the jump because controlling a parachute is easier with bare hands. A helmet and goggles are supplies supplied to each smoke jumper. The helmet is made of aluminum because this metal is lightweight and strong. Also, metal does not burn, so smoke jumpers don't have to worry about burning embers floating around while they work. Attached to the helmet is a face mask, somewhat like the one on a football helmet. The face mask protects a smoke jumper from branches when he or she lands in a tree. Goggles protect the eyes from wind, flying embers, branches, and smoke. So if we take a look, they talked about the gloves there, the parachute, the bright fire retardant um, material for their jumpsuit, helmet with the face mask. So we can kind of do some comparing and contrasting quick between the helmet that I'm wearing. So this is what you would see firefighters in our area wearing. And then take a look at that helmet that the smoke jumper is wearing. So you probably see some similarities and you probably see some differences. So think about how is my helmet that I'm wearing and how is that smoke jumper's helmet similar and different from mine? All right, let's keep reading. Oh, we forgot a caption, let's go up. Um, so with this diagram and this picture of a smoke jumper, we have this little caption down here. It says, jumpers, jumpsuits help protect them from extreme heat and are especially made to keep them cool. So they protect them from the heat and also keep them cool. All right, OK, 
Okay, so we'll read this, um, we'll look at this picture and caption right up here right away. So it says, smoke jumpers hook their parachute to a static line, which causes their chutes to open automatically when they jump. Oh my gosh, I'm afraid of heights. And looking at that, ooh, makes your teacher a little scared. So the next um, heading here is called the parachute. So we're going to be learning about those parachutes that they use. The master parachute rigger is in charge of packing each smoke jumper's parachute. Parachutes must be packed in a certain way for them to unfold properly during a jump. A poorly packed parachute could tangle in its own ropes and send the smoke jumper crashing to the ground. As the plane carrying the smoke jumpers nears the drop zone, the smoke jumpers check for parachutes and gear. The parachute is attached to their backs by a harness. The harness is strapped around a jumper's shoulders, across the chest, and between the legs. The harness keeps the jumper attached to the parachute during the fall. An emergency parachute sits in a pack against the jumper's stomach. That's what I'd be wondering if they have a backup just in case. All right, the jump master is our next heading. The jump master does not jump with the smoke jumpers. The jump master's job is to make sure that the smoke jumpers are jumping from the right place in the air so that they will land safely near the fire. The jump master does this with the help of the airplane pilot. <clears throat> they both spot areas on the ground that could serve as the landing zone. Before the jump master gives the signal to jump, however, he or she must be sure that the plane is in the right position. To do this, the jump master drops crepe paper streamers out of the plane from 1,500 feet. This is the proper height for smoke jumpers to jump from. The jump master watches the streamers fall towards the ground, and their path tells the jump master if the wind direction is right for the smoke jumpers to drop safely to the ground. And then we have a picture down here. It looks like they're inside of the plane getting ready to jump. It says the jump master makes sure that smoke jumpers are jumping from the right spot to land safely near a fire. So it sounds like the jump master has a very important job um, to keep those firefighters safe. All right. While the jump master and the pilot spot for landing zones, the smoke jumpers look out the window at the land below. They study the ground in the area near the fire. They need to know where clearings, rocky land, and the wildfire are located. When the plane is positioned correctly, it circles the drop zone. The smoke jumpers then prepare to jump. They hook their parachutes to a static line, which is a thick wire attached inside of the plane that holds the parachute release cords, so that the smoke jumper shoots open automatically when they jump. When the chutes open, the smoke jumpers don't just float down. Instead, they use the parachute shroud lines attached to the chute to steer them towards the landing zone and away from the fire. When the smoke jumpers hit the ground, they roll to absorb the hard impact. They quickly pull their chutes to the ground and gather them to make sure no wind pulls the chutes and drags their bodies along the ground. Sometimes smoke jumpers actually aim for trees if there's no clearing. Once caught on a tree, they drop themselves to the ground with their safety line. Smoke jumpers get out of the trees quickly. They don't want to be caught dangling from a branch when fire is nearby. Bundled tools. Once the smoke jumpers have gathered themselves in the ground, they need their tools. Their plane circles the area and drops more parachutes. Their chutes hold packages containing tools, food supplies, and other equipment. If a stream, pond, or lake is near the fire, hoses and water pumps will be packed too. The parachutes are colored to identify what they are carrying. A red parachute bundle might include shovels and saws. A yellow parachute might carry food supplies. Color-coded supply par parachutes save smoke jumpers valuable time. The last thing a smoke jumper needs is to find sandwiches when he or she is looking for a shovel. Says the pol Pulaski, a combination of an axe and a hoe, is a tool of choice for smoke jumpers. All right, our last page here. Ready to move out. Once the supplies are gathered, the smoke jumpers head toward the fire with their gear on their backs. Now the real work begins. But before they can get to the fire's edge, the smoke jumpers must determine where the fire is, where it might be heading, and the best way to tackle the blaze. Getting home safely. Putting out a wildfire may be a job that smoke jumpers are sent to do. Over the many years, smoke jumpers have been fighting wildfires. Very few of them have died. This is because safety precautions are taken before, during, and after a fire is fought. As crazy as these men and women who work as smoke jumpers may seem, they have no death wish. The opposite is true. They love the environment and want to keep it safe for animals and humans. Their job is extremely dangerous, but they are professionals. They understand the risks and know what to do to avoid death. I'll try to fit the rest in. I have 
20 seconds. When the fire has been smothered and all the work is done, it's time for the smoke jumpers to return to base. But since they dropped from the skies into a remote area, how will they get out? Often by the same method they got in. The team radios its base and calls for a helicopter to come pick the smoke jumpers up. Sometimes the teams must walk a long way 